Okay, next we're going to take a look at the fades and crossfades in Reaper. As I mentioned earlier, to add a fade out, we can just go to the upper right corner, see how the cursor changes, and create a fade just by dragging right here. This is a fade out, and over here in the upper left corner can be a fade in. And of course, we could delete it just by going to the left or to the right until they disappear. Now, by default, this option is turned on auto crossfade. And when it's turned on and we trim from one item to another, as they overlap, it creates a crossfade, which means this item is going to fade out as this item fades in, making the transition so much smoother. Now, if auto crossfade is not turned on, if it's turned off over here, and we do the same thing, the items are going to overlap. In other words, we're going to hear both of them at the same time. So that could get a bit messy. So if you don't want that behavior, just go up here under Options and turn on Trim Content behind Media Items when editing. And when that's turned on and we trim from one item to another, it's going to trim the second one. In other words, it cuts off the end. See right here how it's cut off? As you drag it over, it actually trims it or makes it shorter. This way, no two items will overlap. But let's turn that off. And let's turn Auto Crossfade back on, which we can do from the toolbar or from a keystroke. On the PC, it's Alt X, and on the Mac, it's Option X. Just hit it, and Auto Crossfade turns back on. Hit it again, and it turns it off. But let's put it back on. And now if we trim from one item to another, it crossfades. And we could adjust that crossfade from the right side to make it longer, or the left side. Or we can move it by holding down Shift. See how the cursor changes? And we can move both sides together. So we can adjust the crossfade to a different spot while keeping its length. So we can move it over here or over here, or over here. Now, as I also mentioned earlier, we can change the fade curves. Let's put this back to make a fade out and a fade in. And now we could right click over here, and here are the fade curves. We could use linear, and we'll get a linear fade out curve, or any of these options, including an S curve down here. And we can adjust it either by dragging over here or over here. And the same with fade in. Right click it, change it to linear. Now we have a linear fade in. And we can adjust it here or any of these options. Adjust it here or here. And again, to get rid of it, just drag it over. And now they're gone. And we can do the same thing with crossfades. So if we trim over to here, it creates a crossfade. And we could right click it, see how the cursor changes? Right click it, and we could choose any of these crossfade curves a linear one, this one, or even this one. And if we go down even further, we can also open the crossfade editor. And that opens up this dialog. And from here, we could change a lot of parameters, like our shape. Let's go back to this one. We could change our curve for the left side or the right side. We could change our center. Let's use a different curve. We could change the center, which is the same thing as holding down shift over here. We could change the start or the end. We could change the length, makes it bigger and smaller. The contents, we could actually move the contents of our item, even the volume. 
So there's a lot we can do in this window. But most of the things we need to do, we could do right from here by simply dragging around or changing our curve. And we could also create a crossfade using time selection. Let's delete this, put these next to each other, create a time selection over here, select it by double clicking our track and hitting the keystroke X. That puts a crossfade based on our time selection, which again, we could adjust afterwards. Now let's take a look at what happens when we're punching in audio. Let's say we're happy with this performance, but we want to punch in from bar three to bar four. So we could select it from here to here, make sure we're in time selection auto punch, and go into record to punch this section. We'll play it from here, go into record. Now let's zoom in and see what the punches look like. As you can see, Reaper automatically makes crossfades at the punch points. Here's the punch in, and here's the punch out, which makes the punches sound smoother. As this audio is fading out, as this one fades in, so any glitching will be reduced. And we can move them around by holding the shift key to fix our punch. But having those crossfades happen automatically makes our punches sound a lot smoother. Now, if auto crossfade was turned off, let's see what happens there. Let's undo this. Let's turn off auto crossfade and do the same punch. We'll zoom in. And this time, it's not a crossfade. This audio fades out, and this audio fades in, but there's a point in the middle where it's totally silent. So it's really a fade out and a fade in. It's not a crossfade like this. So for the most part, you're going to want to leave auto crossfade turned on when you're punching in to keep your punches sounding smoother. Now the crossfade size when you punch in is based on this preference. If we go into project to media item defaults, right over here is the option to create automatic fade in and fade out for new items. So every time you create a new item, like when recording or even splitting, let's zoom out and let's split over here. It automatically makes a fade out and a fade in at that split. And the size of that fade in is based on this, which defaults to 10 milliseconds. But we could change it. Let's make it 100. And now if we split it, the fade out and the fade in are 100 milliseconds long. So we can adjust that right in this preference. But this preference also works for punch-ins. So if we redo our earlier punch with this set to 100 milliseconds, this crossfade for the punch is now 100 milliseconds. Or if we put it back to our default of 10 milliseconds, let's punch it again. Now the crossfade at our punch is 10 milliseconds. So we can adjust that right over here. Now down over here, we could adjust the default crossfade shape. By default, it's set to this, but we could change it to being linear. And now if we punch it in, it's now a linear crossfade. Or the punch out, same thing. Now it's linear, which again, we could change right from here but it defaults to this curve. And over here, we can adjust the default fade in and fade out shape. By default, it's set here, 
But if we want to set it to an S curve, let's split it over here and over here. As we zoom in, the fade out over here and the fade in over here are now S curves. Because we chose that preference right over here. And again, the length for that is over here. Now, if we want to change our splits to be a crossfade instead, we could change that here. Overlap and crossfade items when splitting. And the length could be changed here. So it defaults to 10 milliseconds. So if we split this piece over here, we now have a crossfade instead. Instead of having a fade in and a fade out, we get a crossfade because of this. And it's 10 milliseconds in length. So we could change this to 100 milliseconds. And now if we split over here, it's going to crossfade and it's 100 milliseconds. And we could shift it around like this. And that's set here. But it's set to 10 milliseconds by default and it's turned off. So each time we create a new item by splitting them, we're just going to get a fade in and a fade out. Like this. A fade in and a fade out. Let's put the curves back to the default. And there's a few actions I want to show you. The first action is for changing all fade in shapes. Let's zoom in. And right now, this fade in shape is an S curve. And let's say we wanted to change all our fade in shapes on this track. We could select them all by double clicking the track over here, go to our actions, and I'll show you more about actions in a later chapter. But in the filter, we could type in fade, and here are the actions that deal with fade. So we could choose this one right here. Cycle through fade in shapes. So if we hit run, that fade in shape changed. And all the fade in shapes on this track, because it's all selected, are all going to change. So if we go over here, this one's changed as well. Let's select them again and hit this again. And we can cycle through until we find the shape we prefer. Let's go with that one. And we can do the same thing with fade out right here, cycle through it, and our fade out shape changes. Let's go with this one. So it's a great way of changing all the fade in and fade out shapes all at once. Now there's another fade action I want to show you, and that's fade items into cursor or fade items out from cursor. Let me show you that one. Let's say we want to fade to this spot here, but we don't want to have to do it this way. Go over here and drag it. Let's say it's too far. Let's say we're all the way over here and there's no way of grabbing it. We could just click right here and choose this action. Fade items into cursor. Hit run. And it fades all the way to there. And we can do the same thing on the other side. Let's say we're all the way over here and we want to fade from here to the end. But we don't want to have to go back over here to find it. We could just click here, go to this action, fade items out from cursor, hit run, and now it fades out from here to the end of the item. And we could adjust it. So those are just a few actions that affect fades. So anyway, that's fades and crossfades in Reaper. Let's move on. Mm -hmm.